Okay, listen, no more heavy textbooks, no more reading for longer duration. In this video, I'll break the chapters in a crisp and digestible format for you to process. So without any further ado, let's get on with it. Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the chapter The Earth and the Solar System, which is the first chapter in the class 6th NCRT Geography book. All right. So the first page talks about the solar system, much preferably our, our sky, you know, how the sky looks like, what are the shiny and bright objects that are there in the sky like like moon like stars so basically it just speaks about that so uh, the takeaway from this would be this you know the full moon is called Purnima remember that and a new moon is called Amavasya and there's a difference of 15 days fortnight right and the next thing is celestial body so what is a celestial body anything that is shining uh, in the night is called a celestial body so as a result a star is a celestial body all right and Another thing uh, which which is of importance is a star is made up of gases, all right, and they are big and hot. Remember that, and they emit large amount of energy, large amount of uh, heat and energy. So these celestial bodies are called stars. See? And one more thing, the sun is a star. I didn't know till now. The sun is a star. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, this is this is everything that is there in the first page. So now let's move on to the second page. Coming to the second page, here we talk about constellations, planets, and etc. So before going to the textual part, let's just go through this image. What do you see? A girl, and then a few stars, and then one star here. So this star is nothing but a, ah, I forgot, small bear, yeah, small bear, uh, Saptarishi, you know, consists of a seven star. This is one of the constellations, and straight through this you can see the North Star. North Star is nothing but a pole star. And the reason it's called a pole star is because it always remains in the same position in the sky. And that is the reason why uh, sailors in ancient time used to be pretty much helpful by seeing the pole star and they could locate the north direction. Correct? Now coming to this important line, some celestial bodies do not have their own heat and light, which is true. We just read this in the previous page. They are led by the light of the star. Such bodies are called planets. Cool. We got this. Uh, one of the important thing would be the planet word is derived from Greek word called planetai, which means wanderer. Hmm. Anything else? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The earth on which we live is a planet. <laughs> we all know that. And the heat and light from sun. So we get the heat and light from sun. Cool. The moon that we see in the sky is a satellite. Very important. Just remember this. The moon that we see in the sky is a satellite. Um, nothing else. The sun, eight planets, satellites, and some other such bodies known as asteroids and meteorites. So cool. This 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 entire thing means solar system. That's it. So let's move on to the next page. So coming to the third page, we have a wonderful image over here. We have an image of our solar system. So the only thing that needs to be looked from this image is this asteroid belt. Yes, the asteroid belt which lies in between Mars and Jupiter. Remember this asteroid belt lies between MJ Michael Jackson which means Mars and Jupiter just remember this that's it moving on to the next in the fourth page we'll read about Sun planets and another specific planet called the Earth so let's read something about Sun hmm Sun is the center of solar system we know that it's made up of extremely hot gases got it the Sun is the ultimate source of heat and light done okay one important thing the sun is about 150 million kilometers away from Earth. Remember this. 150 million. 150 million. Remember this. Okay. Next, coming to planets. There are eight planets. Yes, there are eight planets. There used to be nine. Pluto is gone. In case you didn't know that, Pluto is gone. So how do we remember that? There is a mnemonic. My very efficient mother just serves nuts. I can't believe they put nuts. <laughs> Anyways. Moving on, all the eight planets of the solar system move around the sun as fixed paths. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, we all know that all the planets move in a fixed path. Okay? These paths are elongated. Remember this. So if a question is asked, how does a planet move around the sun? It's 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 in an, an elongated manner. Elongated. Elongated. Yeah. Which is something like a oval. Yeah? Okay. They are called orbits. Remember this. Mercury is nearest to the sun. Done. It takes a lot only eighty eight days. Eighty eight days. Fat major. Okay? Two fat major. Eighty eight days. It takes Mercury eighty eight days to revolve around Sun. Done. 
Venus is considered to be Earth's twin. Remember this. Earth's twin is Venus. Okay. Just remember this. Twin. V2. Okay. V2. So V for Venus and twin is the twin. <laughs> two. Yeah. Twin brother of Earth. So V. VE. Okay. Yeah. Venus is the twin brother of Earth. Just remember this. Um, Pluto was considered to be planet C. However, in a meeting of the International Astronomical Union, a decision was taken that Pluto, like other celestial objects discovered in recent past, may be called dwarf planet. So it's gone dwarf. Dwarf is nothing but filled with gases and, and it can just go away anytime. Okay? Yeah. Now let's talk about a little bit about Earth. The Earth is the third nearest planet of the Sun. Cool, done. We know that in size it is the fifth largest planet. Remember this fifth largest planet. Okay, it is slightly flattened at the pole. That is why its shape is described as geoid. Cool. So if a question is asked, what is the shape of Earth? It's geoid. Okay, geoid means Earth-like shape, which is a little elongated towards the pole, just like a like a rugby ball. Okay. Moving on to the next page. In the fifth page, we have a little continuation of the planet Earth, and then we'll talk about Moon. So let's read something about Earth. So Earth has a condition which is favorable to support life and which is not too hot and not too cold. Remember this. So a question can be asked uh, why Earth is a favorable place to uh, live. Okay, this is the point. These are the points that needs to be mentioned for a good answer. Okay. One is uh, it's a favorable support life uh, and then the Earth is neither too hot nor too cold. Okay. It has water and air, done, very essential. The air has life supporting gas called oxygen, done. From the outer space, the earth appears blue because its two thirds surface is covered by water and it is also called blue planet. Okay. So two third, the word is two third surface. So if, if someone asks you that how much of earth surface is filled with water, it's two third. Now coming to the moon, our earth has only one satellite that is the moon so moon is a satellite and earth has one satellite called the moon its diameter is only one quarter that of earth great so the diameter of a uh, moon is one quarter of that of earth one quarter that is one by four yeah so it appears so big because it's nearer to a planet understood it is about 300 sorry 384400 kilometer away that's a, that's a fact 384400 kilometer away now you can compare the distance of the earth from sun and that from moon done the moon moves around the earth in about 27 days hmm remember this the moon moves around the earth in about 27 days so it takes 27 days for moon to move around the earth so 27 days how are you going to remember this 27 days okay just just think of some uh, time of a train that takes so many that many days to reach from place A to B just just remember however you want to it takes exactly the same time to complete one spin hmm. the moon does not have conditions favorable for life it has neither water nor air it has mountains remember this moon don't moon doesn't have water or air it has mountain okay so let's just read um, on the right side of the page a few, few facts and few trivia. So a satellite is a celestial body that moves around the planets in the same way as the planet moves around the sun. Cool. This is, this is important. Okay. Satellite is a celestial body. Okay. Just like stars and planet, uh, satellite is also a celestial body because it, it imitates the way a planet moves. Okay. So satellites are of two types, natural and human-made. Natural, we just spoke about moon. Moon is a natural satellite. And let's talk about a little bit human-made satellite. It's an artificial body. It is designed by scientists to gather information about the universe or for communication. Done. It is carried by a rocket and placed in the orbit around the Earth. Done. Some of the Indian satellites in space are INSAT, IRS, EDUSAT, etc. Hmm. Remember this. INSAT, IRS. EDUSAT, IRS. It's not Indian Revenue Service, it's IRS. INSAT, IRS, EDUSAT. Okay, remember that. Now let's move on to the next page. So in this page, we will read about asteroids and meteorites. Okay, apart from stars, planets, and satellites, there are numerous tiny bodies 
that moves around the sun it's called asteroids hmm you must have seen all of those sci-fi movies right apart from stars planet you see all those flashy things that moves from uh, one place to another in in space those are nothing but asteroids okay just remember that and one important thing they are found between orbits of mars and jupiter just try to recollect previously we just read that uh, there is a asteroid belt that is uh, located in between mars and jupiter okay so just remember mj michael jackson and there is a belt asteroid belt okay let's go to meteoroids the small pieces of rocks which move around the sun are called meteoroids hmm rocks remember that sometimes these meteoroids come near the earth and tend to drop upon it during this process due to friction with the air they get heated up and burn cool nothing nothing different yes sometimes a meteor without being completely burned falls on the earth and creates a hollow cool they just enter and we sometimes call them as uh, shooting star but they are nothing but meteoroids do you see a whitish broad band like a white glowing path across the sky on a clear starry night it is a cluster of millions of stars this band is milky wave galaxy yes so what is a milky way galaxy it is nothing but a cluster of millions of stars it is a cluster of stars so milky way is nothing but a cluster of stars remember that hmm it was named as akash ganga a galaxy uh, is a huge system of billions of stars and clouds of dust and gases so there are millions of such galaxies that make the universe so one of the famous um, milky way or galaxy milky way galaxy is akash ganga remember that it is difficult to imagine how big the universe is and uh, nothing important yeah so done let's move on to the next page so coming to the last page of this chapter you see this picture it's it's pretty self informative and it's pretty good so can you relate yourself with the universe let's let's just quickly go through the hierarchy hierarchical order order of the universe so the first comes earth i mean you you as a person and then comes earth because you are in the earth and the earth comes in a solar system done solar system comes in a milky way yes we just read milky way is nothing but millions of stars okay it's a galaxy of millions of stars and then everything that is there in milky way solar system everything comes under the universe so cool done let's let's go to some exercise question so now let's quickly have a look at the questions it, it is a good way you know this way you will actually um think about it whether you have understood the entire chapter properly or not okay let's let's just go through few questions how does a planet differ from a star we know this right a planet is a star has its own energy heat and light it emits on its own light it is made up of gases and planet gets heat and uh, light from sun okay yeah just just write something like that yeah i mean just go through the first page you'll get the answer in a proper sentence but then i'm just giving you the brief understanding of whatever we just went through what is meant by the solar system we know that right solar system it has everything it has all the planets it's a combination of planets moon asteroids stars suns everything name all the planets according to their distance from the sun just refer to that third page where we saw that beautiful picture that contained that asteroid belt and you could see all the planets with numbers next to it those numbers are nothing but the distance uh, from sun to that planet why is the earth called a unique planet this is interesting and and i think we are aware of the answer we just read few minutes back uh it is because it is the only planet which has um the survival factor in it you know we can breathe there's oxygen in it there's water air in it and it's suitable for human why do we see only one side of the moon always why because um you remember it takes 27 days yeah so it takes 27 days to uh, revolve around earth and earth revolves at 23 days 56 hours something so um you know few of the factor is that and and it is it is near to us and uh, and then it is also one fourth of the size of earth so as a result by the time we could see the entire part of it the earth takes its revolution and then we go to the other side and due to which we just see the half side of it what is the universe just go through the uh, previous page you will see that uh, br brief hierarchical order of the entire universe so the universe is a combination of all 
uh, planets, Milky Way, um, Milky Way, uh, <laughs> galaxy, everything. You know, it's it's a combination of all that forms universe. Hmm. Coming to the take the correct answer. The planet known as the Earth's twin is we read that. Remember, V E V E V two engine, V two engine, V twin engine. Remember, so it's Venus. V E the the starting letter of Venus is V E, which is Venus and Earth. Which is the third nearest planet to the sun? We know that. Just go with that mnemonics. You'll find it. Earth. All the planets move around the sun, you know. It's not circular path. It's not even rectangular path. We we read about it. elongated. It is elongated near the poles, so it is like a rugby shape. The pole star indicates the direction to the. We know that north. Yeah, just remember that. Asteroids are found between the orbits of. Asteroid. Yeah, we are talking about asteroid belt. Yeah, just refer to the third. Um, third page, that that beautiful picture, Mars and Jupiter, Michael Jackson, MJ. Remember, there's an asteroid belt in between. So yeah, so we have covered everything. I think we have understood this chapter pretty well. Fill in the blanks. It's it's not much of use. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. You should feel good about it. You just read an entire chapter of geography. If you like the video, please share and like. I'll post more narrations. Happy studying.